Yeah. yeah. Jameer Gibbs is the next player on our list. Uh, he is up 3.1 spots, ADP 11.5. Very important to note. He did have that little injury scare. Um, and he, uh, Jordan Schultz reported today that despite the leg injury, Gibbs is going to be ready for week one against the Rams. If you care about this, Rams allowed the 11th most points to running backs last season. So Gibbs has got that going for him, which is pretty cool. I'll go to Pete first on this one. Pete, you're paying a high, you know, we just talked about two other running backs where you're paying little to nothing for. You're paying quite a bit if you want to draft Jameer Gibbs, Pete. How, how many shares do you have of Gibbs and, and what are your thoughts? And is there any concern about this injury maybe lingering, even though he'll be ready? Yeah, so I, I mean, I do worry about the injury lingering a little bit. Um, he did have a hamstring injury earlier uh, this season. Um uh, or in the off season, it was reported that, you know, it, 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 that he was, I think it was OTAs. I believe that there was a possibility that he might've tweaked it, uh, but he ended up being fine, but he had a hamstring injury last year too. Um, uh, October six, uh, just before week five. Um, and, and for what it's worth, I'm a big David Montgomery fan. Uh, I've said it all off season, but I don't think David Montgomery is going away, um, in this offense. And, uh, Look, for what it's worth, I, I'd prefer drafting Kyron at this point. Um, what's the difference? Both of them have injury concerns. They're they're very similar in size. And one has to compete with David Montgomery, and the other one has to compete with Blake Corum, who is a rookie who hasn't done anything yet. Um, and, you know, for what it's worth, if we're going off of the trends, Sean McVay has, st- you know, statistically stuck with one guy will that change maybe maybe they don't completely ride Kyron like they did but David Montgomery is one of in my opinion is one of the most undervalued backs in the NFL I mean he's not flashy for fantasy but he's a guy that just gets the job done he's a hammer it's what they like to do in Detroit so I, I for what it's worth I'll, I'll I'll grab Gibbs in best ball drafts if he falls because he is slipping a little bit in best ball but for a redraft, um, I, I have Kyron ahead of him. Um, at my Kyron's my running back seven, and I have Gibbs as my running back nine. And that hasn't changed because of this. That was my rankings when we did the show two weeks ago. So I'm sticking by this. Um, and the last thing I'll say is Kyron averaged five points per game more than Gibbs last season. Now, mm. I get it. It's a new season. You have to assume that things can change. They didn't add any big pass catchers, so maybe they use him as a pass catcher more in the slot with David, David Montgomery in the backfield. Could be. Um, but Kyron, you know, I, I feel like I know what I'm getting unless he gets hurt with Gibbs. There is uncertainty, but there is upside. But there was upside with Kyron last year. It's not like he was he finished as a top five running back, so the upside was still there. So I feel like I know what I'm getting with Kyron if he's healthy, which is top five upside. Steve, what says you with Jameer Gibbs again? High cost, eleven point five right now. So, uh, how, how do you look at him? Well, he's starting to slip. I I saw a draft last night. He went nineteen, so it's like middle of the second round. So, um, if he starts going around there, you know, I mean, I'm t- I'm still taking him end of the first round. Like if I have a the eleventh or twelfth pick, um, you know, maybe right now with the injury, I'd favor Taylor or Barkley, but I would still take Gibbs in that spot. Um, the hammy, yeah, obviously a concern, but it's still early enough where he can overcome it. Um, right. I guess you are taking a little bit of a risk, but at this point, I think he's going to start to fall a couple more spots going into that early second round, middle second round. So I'll still take him there. Um, I think this guy has the ability to be one of the top three backs in the league. I mean, elite talent. I think he's really, really damn good. They're already talking about using him more in the slot this year. So more of it as a passing weapon, which I think is very, very smart. We saw that end of last year in the playoffs. He really started to step up uh, in the passing game. So yeah, I feel fine. I, Montgomery is definitely a solid back. I've always liked, liked Montgomery, but I feel like this season Gibbs could kind of elevate himself and be that true number one guy over Montgomery and kind of earn even a bigger share. Yeah, I just want to say before I go to Anthony, Pete, I saw you took your camera off and you shoved a bunch of food in your face. I wanted to add you to the stage so bad. I wanted to do it so bad. Um, Anthony, go ahead. Jameer Gibbs, you're you're still on mute. A- Anthony, Jameer Gibbs, what are your thoughts there? High price. What- so Gibbs, like similar to Pete, like I am lower than the consensus, I feel like, uh, on Jameer Gibbs. 
if you look at where he's going ADP-wise, running back four, I have Saquon, Jonathan Taylor uh, ranked ahead of Gibbs. And depending on my mood, sometimes I'm drafting Derrick Henry over Gibbs. Uh, mm. Gibbs has a lot of good things going for him. Running yeah. back eight last year in points per game. Really took a stranglehold over that backfield down the stretch. And, you know, does a lot more than David Montgomery. Now, some red flags I have with Gibbs is if this Lions defense improves, is there going to be less opportunities for Gibbs? Because in the four-minute drill, that is David Montgomery territory. Mm, uh, how point. much does Jamison Williams, let's say he takes a step forward, does that take away pass-catching opportunities or just overall opportunities away from Gibbs? Uh, so when when it comes to these top running backs, and, and I'm putting them in tiers, who can finish as the overall RB1? You have your usual guys, your big three. I put Saquon uh, slightly behind them. I think he can make a case in, in Philly to be the overall RB1. Then I have Gibbs in this next tier of players with Jonathan Taylor, Gibbs, and, and, and Derrick Henry. And the reason why I have JT over them is – JT does not have David Montgomery behind him. Like that's going to steal away opportunities or, or goal line opportunities. So that, that's like my tiebreaker there. Even Derrick Henry, there's nobody there that really steal opportunities. Uh, so that's why I'm a little bit lower than Gibbs. I'm fine taking him. I play volume team. So I'm yeah. not completely out, but like I, I, at his cost, his ADP has gone up three spots and I don't agree with it. And, and here, there, there's some context of why it's maybe going up. The first round of fantasy drafts right now is a literal mess. When you look at, you know, CD, contract, CMC, his second calf injury since December. Um, Tyree's fine. Bijan's fine. Brees is fine. Jamar Chase, contract, and Joe Burrow issues with the injury. Uh, Justin Jefferson, we don't know what the hell's going on in Minnesota right now. So, like, the, the first round's a mess, so maybe people are like, you know what, these, these receivers are scaring the hell out of me. I'm going to bump Gibbs up. So I, I, I get it, but I, I think that's the reason why Gibbs is, is moving up a little bit right now because the, the, the first round wide receivers plus CMC might be scaring people right now as we are about three weeks away from kickoff. Yeah, but I think, right. I think you're going to see him <clears> – <throat> Maybe the numbers say that I'm looking, but the last couple of drafts I've watched, now he's going into the second round. So he mm. can shift back. 